This is going to be one that tackles something I've talked about quite a bit. So anybody who's watched my channel a lot will know what I'm getting at and I'm just going to go over it in depth today. Uh, first off, thank you to all the patrons. Really appreciate you guys, your support. Um, let's get those lessons out of the way. So hit me up and also we'll handle the January Q&A. So now let's get into the subject of today's video, which is kickflips. And yes, I've made a video covering kickflips before, but that was a basic how to kickflip video. And today I'm going to tackle a concept that I speak about all the time, which is the three different types of kickflip. So what do I mean when I say three different types of kickflip, right? And there might be a little bit of like Dunning-Kruger going on with some people where like you don't understand the kickflip that much. You haven't had to take your kickflip to different things and apply them in different ways. So you might be thinking, what is this guy talking about three different kickflips? Let's start at the beginning. The first kickflip, the way that I was able to learn to kickflip. So in the 90s when I started skating, if you started skating and if you were where I was in Los Angeles, most likely you'd be skating with people who were more advanced than you. And the problem with that is when you watch and try to imitate people who are farther along in their skating campaign than you are, you're inevitably trying to replicate movements that your body hasn't adapted and to and isn't able to perform yet. So when I was trying to learn how to kickflip, I was attempting to copy the kickflip of people who've been skating for three, four, five years. And the way that they were kickflipping required movements, required stability on top of the skateboard that I did not possess yet because of my lack of experience. And it wasn't until I met a friend named Sebastian who was close to me as far as his skating experience, who had just learned to kickflip himself, that I saw a very different type of kickflip. One that didn't come as high off the ground, one that didn't require me to extend my leg at all, and one where that I was actually able to replicate. And this is what I call the first stage of your kickflip. If you've watched freestyle skaters, if you've seen the old footage of some of Rodney Mullen's early kickflips, you'll know what I, I'm talking about when I say this first type of kickflip because it is very distinct. For one thing, the board tends to rock it because you're relying on popping the board up and then kicking the board down with your front foot to get the board to flip over. So you're not really sliding your foot forward at all for this kickflip. And this is going to be the easiest way for 90% of beginners. I don't know. That's an arbitrary number. It might be 99. It might be 85. But the majority of people learning how to kickflip are going to have to learn this way. And the reason for that is to flick your ankle, it requires some a, a bit of strength in your ankle. To, to pop and slide and then flick, it requires you to be able to stabilize your skateboard, to balance your skateboard while you're squatting down. And as a beginner, you simply don't have that ability. Any of you guys who are a little bit further along in your skating, you'll remember that when you first started and you first started trying to roll and just to ollie, your board would inevitably turn in one direction, either front side or back side. And the reason for this is that once you crouched, you took weight off of whichever or ever leg was stabilizing the board, and the other leg wasn't strong enough to keep the board stable while you were crouching down. And you only develop the ability to keep your board straight while you're attempting tricks from experience, from muscle memory. And that's why this first version of the kickflip is an important step because if you don't get through this step, you can't make it to the second form of kickflip. Now this one is, if you see someone make this type of kickflip work, it's it can be a good looking kickflip, right? This one's gonna get up off the ground. You are gonna pop, you are gonna slide, you are gonna flick, but the difference between this and the third kickflip that I'll explain later is there isn't gonna be the kind of separation that allows you to pop your kickflip extremely high, right? So typically this is where most of your learning is done at this stage of kickflip. All the way up to you learning how to kickflip into grinds, 
maybe learning to kick flip into even a back lip, but it's not gonna get you very far with the height. So the difference in this is, you're able to stabilize your board when you crouch. You're able to pop, slide your front foot, and then you're gonna start to flick your ankle. But you're not actually following through with that front leg like you will be later when we get to the final stage of kickflip, what I believe is the final stage of kickflip. And this one usually, after you've been kickflipping for a year or two, you'll be able to move on to this one. Now everybody's experience is gonna be different because once I learned to kickflip, I was probably doing 100 a day at least. And uh, once I was at the second stage of kickflip, my friends and I at Hollywood High, sometimes we force ourselves to do 50 kickflips at the beginning of our session, you know? So not everyone is gonna have that type of experience with their skating. Not everybody is going to be, uh, is gonna be used to dedicating themselves in that way. This one, it's usually gonna take you a year, maybe two years, depending on how often you skate, depending on how diligent you are with applying your kickflips to get to this stage of kickflip. And there is a very different appearance from kickflip number one to kickflip number two. For example, typically people's toes tend to be pointed at the nose of the board when they're attempting the first type of kickflip, when you're learning how to kickflip. Also, you tend to have less of your foot, less of your front foot on the board when you're doing that kickflip. Your feet will also probably be closer together, which also ties into why it's a little bit more difficult to balance. But once you get to the second kickflip, your foot's gonna be in the center of the board typically. It's, you're typically gonna start to turn your toes toward the outside edge of your board, so the backside edge of your board. You're not gonna be pointing your toes as far towards the nose of your board anymore. And you're starting to use your ankle now when it comes to flipping the board over. So you're no longer using what's called mob. And if you guys don't know what mob is, mob is just when you don't have any flick and you're kicking down, right? So that's the old freestyle way. Like in the beginning when people were learning how to control their skateboard, you gotta think that they also didn't have the muscle memory that's necessary for those complex movements. So they didn't have the ankle strength. They didn't have the quad strength to bend down, stabilize their board, flick their ankle out. That comes with experience and that comes over time. So these early skaters that were doing these tricks when they were freestyle tricks, before people like Mike Vallely and Matt Hensley came along and kind of pioneered street skating, these guys were all using this that first type of kickflip. So if you notice, there was no flick. And then once people started to be able to kickflip downstairs, once people started to be able to catch their kickflips, that's when you started to see the second type of kickflip. It still wasn't very high. It still wasn't very impressive by today's standards. However, it was remarkably different from that first stage of kickflip. And that's where you start to see the back foot catch the board and things like that. So now we're gonna get into the territory where I think most people never make it to, right? And that's gonna be your third type of kickflip, right? And that one, that's gonna require much, a, a whole lot of control, right? So you're gonna have to be able to stabilize your board when you're, do, when you're squatting. You're gonna have to be able to use your squat effectively. You're gonna have to be able to time your popping properly because if you mess up any, at any one of these stages, once you pop your board, your legs are gonna be too far spread apart and your knees are gonna be nearly locked out and you won't have anywhere to go to make that kickflip happen. So this is like like the kid Felipe from Brazil whose kickflip kind of broke the internet uh, last year in 2023. This is the type of kickflip that he's doing. And this kickflip happens in three different parts in my opinion. So you have your pop, you have your sliding, and then you have the extension of your front leg and the flicking of your ankle. And those happen in tandem as the third part, right? So just the beginning stage of this kickflip happens in three parts. And then you're actually going to catch your board. It's gonna be still rising and it's gonna come up to your back leg. So if you've seen these types of kickflips before where it looks like someone squats down, they're, they're creating a whole lot of force with their squat. They're popping. They're sliding their front foot all the way up to the nose, it seems like, and then they're extending their front leg out and flicking their ankle. The board comes up to their back foot. 
they're crouched and they wait to land. That's the third type of kickflip. And this one's necessary if you're gonna get good at anything like my one of my favorite tricks, a kickflip crooked grind down a handrail. Like it's one of my favorite tricks. And you're not gonna be able to do a good enough one to make your kickflip crook happen down any rail bigger than a than a tiny little skate park rail if you don't if you're not at this third stage of kickflip because it requires you to catch the board before the board hits the rail and so that means you have to have a level of precision and control with your kickflip that it, it just takes a lot of experience now i can't give you a specific timeline for how long it's going to take you to get to this kickflip because most people never get there and frankly, there are people who you would consider very good skaters whose kickflip never reaches this status, right? If you're able to get to this kickflip, you're probably able to do kick to kickflip into the majority of grinds. So you're able to do your kickflip nose grinds, your kickflip crooks, kickflip front crook, uh, kickflip back tail, kickflip back lip, kickflip back smith. You're able to kickflip front front lip as well. You you have enough control over your kickflip that you can make it do what you want. Kickflip front smith, kickflip feebles, um, all of those tricks. Those are generally going to be done by people who are at that last, this last stage of kickflip, this final stage of kickflip. And this takes a whole lot of trial and error. This takes a whole lot of practice. And frankly, you're gonna have to be conditioned well to accomplish this kickflip. Now, I, I sh there should be video examples of all of these kickflips on the screen as you're watching me explain these because some of you guys are gonna have a hard time understanding them without getting visuals. And hopefully, hopefully with at least the first kickflip, I'm, I'm, I'm at least able to show you guys a passable version of it because at this stage of my skating i tend to only use the second and third type of kickflip like my first one of the day is probably going to be the second one because i'm not going to put as put enough effort into it for it to be the third one and the rest of them are probably going to be the third because i'm probably going to be kick flipping into front side grinds crooked grinds backside tail slides maybe back lips so i'm going to need that precision and control and the other thing once you're kick flipping, if you're gonna kick flip up a set of stairs or anything like that, more anything more than three stairs, it's gonna require that third type of kick flip. Because when you're kick flipping upstairs, you basically want the kick flip to be finished before you're at the top of the stairs. So you wanna have caught the board on the way up and you're just crouching, right? You're just crouching. So you reach the height before you've reached the entire length of the stairs that you're kick flipping up. And so I'll be using some examples, filming myself doing some kick flips here at Lake Street on flat. I hope that gives you guys a good explanation of when I'm talking about the three different types of kick flips that there are. I'm gonna do this with other tricks as well because there's a, a lot of confusion and, and, and a lot of times it's not your fault. Like I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Dunning-Kruger effect. Basically for you to understand what you don't know, you need to be at a certain level where you're able to comprehend what's happening above you, right? And I've experienced this in my boxing and Muay Thai classes. I experienced it with skating. You think that you know what someone's doing. You think that you're doing the same trick as someone. But now where I can 360 flip up a five stair, I don't 360 flip the same way I did when I learned it. I don't 360 flip the same way when I learned to do it down a three stair. So hopefully I can break this down for you guys in these videos. Thank you for watching and enjoy skateboarding.